Dexy's All Time Runners, a short story by Janet H. Swinney, Installment 3. Getting into Miss Thornton's house was an altogether different kettle of fish. No cat flap here. Dexy had to go round to the front street, leap onto the bedroom windowsill and wail plaintively until he could prevail upon Miss Thornton to get out of bed and let him in. Or he could wait by the back door until she came out to shout for him. Today he preferred to wait by the back door. At last he heard the chain being undone. A sliver of pyjama Miss Thornton appeared at the door. Delilah! Delilah! she called. Degsy shot past her into the house. And yes, that was the one drawback to being Miss Thornton's lodger. Despite all evidence to the contrary, she fondly imagined he was a sweet, unsullied little girl cat. She followed him into the living room and gathered him up into her dressing gown. By Jove, you were quick off the mark today. Have those nasty tomcats been pestering you again? She inspected his eyes and ears for signs of molestation. If I could get me hands on those dirty beasts. She took him into the kitchen and dropped him on to the counter. But I tell you what I've got will cheer you up. She set out an old wooden chopping board and a knife with a blackened blade. Eh, ah, nice little bit of lamb's liver. She brought out a plastic bag from the fridge and slit it. The liver slithered like a jewel bright blancmange over the chopping board. See? Texie nearly wet himself. This was what made gender bending worthwhile. Miss Thornton carefully chopped the delicacy into cubes, slid it into a murky pan and set it to simmer. Degsy stalked impatiently up and down the work surface, fluffing his pantaloons. At last he had the delicacy in front of him on the floor. He ate with total dedication, not noticing Miss Thornton fry up bacon and egg for herself. Eventually there was nothing left to do but nose the dish around the floor and then look up pleadingly, even though he was full to the gunnels. The two of them sat, replete, in the armchair in front of the telly. Degsy cast up a coquettish glance whenever Miss Thornton tickled his chest. They watched the news and then racing from Chepstow. A comforting afterfog of frying drifted through from the kitchen. Just as the horses entered the turnstiles for the two o'clock, there was a knock at the back door. It was Jackie, the home care assistant. Hey, sorry I'm a bit late, Miss Thornton. Hey, are you still not dressed? Miss Thornton looked wrong-footed. I think you'd better go through and change your clothes. Miss Thornton got up reluctantly. It was soft going and she wanted to see whether King's Own Regiment would come through strongly. Have you had your dinner? Couldn't wait any longer. I'll just put it in your book then, shall I? Miss Thornton trotted off into the bedroom while Jackie went to the sideboard drawer and took out an exercise book. What did you have? she shouted. Bacon and egg! She pencilled this in next to the date under a long line of egg and bacon, bacon and egg. Scribbled her name then dropped the book back into the drawer. I've got your pension. What? I've got your pension and your shopping. Wait a minute. Jackie switched off the telly and swiftly pocketed the small china figurine that stood on the cabinet. She stepped back to the sideboard. From elsewhere in her jerkin she pulled out a pension book, some cash and two small Kit Kats and dumped them on the surface. She took one of the Kit Kats, stripped it and broke off one of the logs. She winked at Degsy, tossed him a bit, which he gobbled immediately, and stuffed the rest into her own mouth. Miss Thornton reappeared from the bedroom, in a battered skirt and baggy jumper. She glanced at the telly to discover that she would never know the fate of the King's Own Regiment. Look, there is counted out for you. There was £78.25 due. The shopping came to £8.95 
I got you some Granny Smiths like you asked. I could only get one Kit Kat though. Then I paid the paper bill. That was £7.75. And you still owed me Dad 20 remember, for mending the garden gate. That leaves £31.65. And Jackie spread the items out in descending order. Six fivers, one fifty pence piece, one tenpenny piece and one fivepence. Miss Thornton looked at them slowly. Say that again? Pension, 78.25. Shopping, 8.95. Papers, 7.75. Gate, 20. There, see. 31.65. Now where shall we put them? Miss Thornton still look, stood looking uncertain. What about your brown purse? Miss Thornton nodded. Jackie quickly found the purse and made a show of inserting the notes and the coins in their proper places. OK, I'll put the purse in the top cupboard next to the fireplace. Now don't go letting anybody else get their hands on it, all right? You know where it is then. Miss Thornton nodded again. Sure? More nodding. So I'll be off then. Jackie ruffled Degsy under the chin and whirled across the room. Tomorrow, she said, over her shoulder, I'll get the hoover out and give the place a good going over. All right? The door slammed behind her. Then the gate thudded. Miss Thornton sat down heavily in her chair. She pressed her fingers to her brow. Now, what did she say? Shopping eight pounds ninety-five. Mind, that seems a lot. She sat silent for a bit. Then she got up and went to the sideboard. Let's have a look in the purse. She opened first one drawer and then the other. Why, where is it? Where's me brown purse? 